Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm the inspirational Andy Murray from What Culture. And remember, life is like a box of chocolates. It'll make you fat. Coming up, Leo Rush to quit WWE? Question mark. An update on AEW's product. And an update on the backstage heat for Lars Sullivan. This is the news. We are going to start things off today with some new details on AEW's US TV deal. Now, of course, this was all unveiled yesterday. There's going to be a partnership between AEW and Warner Media. Wrestling is coming back to Turner for the first time in decades. It's all very exciting. But the initial story, it was kind of on details there was no financials we don't know what night it's going to air on now we don't still don't know what night it's going to air on but there are some specifics here from tsn's john mcmullen who i have a few choice quotes from and these have all been backed up by matt men pro wrestling's andrew zarian so in his words in john mcmullen's words the platform is amazing it is an unprecedented deal for a startup so it's been confirmed from a source that there are no rights fees being paid to aew for this deal but they should have never been expected. The only reason these were expected was through what he calls shoddy reporting. So on the other hand, there are production fees. Those are all covered. And there is what is described as a great advertising split for AEW. So to contextualize all this, particularly the rights deal issue, it's worth mentioning here that Vince McMahon didn't secure a rights deal for uh, WWE until 20 years after he'd been producing highly rated TV for Viacom. So really no one should have expected that and that AEW has gotten such a prominent TV deal on such a big station with a really favorable ad split. This is really good stuff. It's impossible to feel anything other than positivity coming yeah, out of this. Yeah, yet again, when it comes to AEW, and we'll be accused of being biased here. Look, you can be a fan of both WWE and AEW. There's no split loyalties here. It's just it's an exciting time for them. It's an exciting time to be a wrestling fan. And this, you know, them getting a good deal is always beneficial for fans. Yeah, it's great. You know, these like silly little AEW versus WWE tweets battles are already going on and I think it's just daft man like you should be rooting for both you want as a wrestling fan you want to have as many choices as many high quality shows that you can spend your time watching on the table you should want these things across the board and they should be accessible well that's what this is so let's just hope that this TV deal really does take off that the AEW product is great and that maybe it'll spur WWE to be even better as well it can only be a good thing and AEW unveiled a massive potentially the biggest new signing they've ever had but I'll tell you that about about that later on for today's and fine this is gonna be good you will not believe who you're they gonna signed. pop your tits off so am I because I don't know who he's talking right about. <laughs> uh, let's move on and update you on the situation with Leo Rush we've covered it a lot over the past few weeks with him uh, allegedly having backstage heat uh, allegedly having issues with WWE and now in a sort of smaller development but people are reading quite a lot into this on the internet across his social media profiles he has removed every reference to the WWE and even popped his email on there for bookings mm. which is fueling yet more speculation he could be set to leave wwe do you think that's the case yeah it's um it's a pretty interesting move so the undertaker actually did this a few months ago when he was taking the starcast booking which has since been cancelled and and he removed all the wwe references and immediately got kind of weird on social media like posting mad selfies of him fishing or doing whatever he does um Obviously, he's still around. Leo Rush, uh, it's its kind of hard to say. This could just be Leo going rogue because Leo has done stuff like this in the past. He does what he wants. He doesn't really look out for the consequences so much, particularly in WWE. Um, there was an old story back in the day when he was on the indies about him like convincing a promoter to send him a tape of his match and just saying, don't worry, it's just for me. It's just for personal use. I'm not going to release it. I'm not going to release it. And then releasing it on his YouTube channel. He does stuff like this. But by the same token yeah i mean it does kind of indicate that he is looking for outside work and that he is perhaps going to be granted his wish and released from the company yeah they've they've just cut all ties with him recently haven't they obviously he's never yeah. been seen with bobby lashley he wasn't even really written off telly when it comes to him and bobby lashley was a bit of a just vanished bit yeah. of problems and then he just yeah like you say disappeared and then there's all this stuff about him like I said, having problems with people backstage, pissing people off because of demands that he's been making, you know, big timing people. 
It's not looking good for him, well, for his future in WWE, I should say. It is looking good for him because he's a phenomenally talented wrestler. Yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult situ situation to analyse with any degree of certainty because obviously we're not sitting backstage, we're not witnessing whatever the heck is going on. You've kind of just got to look at things that like people like Mark Henry have said about the situation, look at what Leo has said about the situation, weigh them up, and probably just come to your own conclusion. Either way, I kind of hope for both parties that Leo does get his release, that he's able to do something he loves, albeit on a slightly smaller platform, platform and just enjoy his life again because it sounds like he's pretty unhappy in WWE. Yeah, either get his release or resolve these issues because I think the character that they had for him in WWE was really good That's and entertaining fun. and he was the perfect mouthpiece mm -hmm. for Bobby Lashley. Having said all this, cue him probably winning money in the bank or something yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, something weird's going to happen. He's going to be WWE champion in about four days. <laughs> it's going to be weird. Anyway, if we could cycle back to AEW mm -hmm. for a little second. I have another quote for you today. But this one's not from journalists or TV officials or anyone like that. It's from Cody and Brandy Rhodes. So if you read the statement that came out with the AEW Warner Media announcement, it had some details on the product. It enhanced, it went over like what to expect, more athleticism, less soapy drama, uh, win-loss records, statistics, all this great stuff. And in there was a line about, you know, it being a bit less scripted than WWE. Obviously scripted promos are a big problem in that promotion. It is something that loads of people point to when it comes to the company's inability to get people over because obviously if you're saying words that are written by someone else they're not your words you're not expressing yourself and it hinders your ability to get over so what Cody and Brandy have essentially done here is promise that there probably won't be any scripted promos in AEW and here's the exact quote you may not see one scripted promo we have these great collaborators plus all of us who want to make this work collaboration yes micromanagement no scripted no that's the best. Kind of harks back to the way wrestling used to be. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is an argument sometimes for script to promise. Sometimes it's easy to just define the lines when someone is, especially isn't that confident or is just getting started, for example, to just tell them, look, go out there, say this, and you'll be fine. Here's your lines. It makes sense. But in the modern era of WWE, with all the experience, especially the guys that AEW signed, the, the, certainly the higher up guys, they've got enough experience that even if you just gave them five bullet points to, to cover in a, a scripted promo. They'd get around to it in their own character stylings. I think that's the problem is they, people get bollocked in WWE if they get one word wrong. Exactly. And then they're so terrified that they just become robots saying whatever was written down for them. And there's no passion. It doesn't come across the audience when, like you mentioned, you hop back to the olden days. And yes, there might have been a bit of effing and jeffing in there, but you've got the point and you've got the passion of the point across. Yes, absolutely. That's You've nailed it there, really. That's exactly what it's going to be. It sounds very much like AEW and their producers are going to say to a wrestler, here is the point, get it over in your own way. You can't just sit there and like script exact sentences for guys like Chris Jericho and MJF, these really charismatic, passionate, talented guys. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. And also, this is another really clever piece of marketing from Cody and Co, because essentially, it's their way of saying we're not gonna be like WWE without actually saying we're not gonna be like WWE. It's another piece of differentiation. They've attacked another thing that a lot of people dislike about the WWE product, and that's just smart marketing. So good on them. They're doing all the right things so far. Let's hope they nail it. Let's hope they knock it out of the park with double or nothing. And when this TV deal kicks in, it's just really great. Like we keep saying, it's just an exciting time to be a wrestling it's fan. It's the most exciting time probably in my lifetime. Yeah, I unquestionably. Uh, right, let's talk more uh, I'm really old. about uh, Lars Sullivan and the WWE. Of course, we reported yesterday he has been fined $100,000 by WWE for those uh, historical sort of controversial comments he posted online prior to signing with WWE. We should mention that. Um, and he's going to be doing sensitivity training. And a tweet from Titus Worldwide. The, well, the leader of Titus Worldwide, Titus Not O'Neil. Plugs. Um, he tweeted at Lars, but he made sure it was, you know, put a dot before it, so he made sure everyone could see it and it was public. Uh, he tweeted Lars because apparently Lars Sullivan has been going around the locker room, basically, um, seeking out the likes of Titus, Titus, seeking out performers that he may have offended with some of the comments that he's made, uh, sincerely apologizing. Uh, and Titus says, I applaud you for that, but also seeking guidance as to how to move forward in being a better human being than you were nine years ago. Nobody is perfect, including, uh, including thank you. Uh, nobody's perfect. Thank you, Vince McMahon, for taking action. Yeah, it's, um, you know, Titus is seen as kind of this not like a locker room leader, but a very positive influence backstage. By all accounts, he's a great guy. Um, he does a lot of really good work, obviously, with uh, fathers and kids and stuff. 
he is, his voice matters is basically is what I'm saying. Um, the Lars situation is interesting. Obviously, this is a step forward for Lars because his first response to all these things was to complain about easily triggered snowflakes on Twitter and to block the Reddit user like a big old baby. So at least he's moving forward in a positive way. You know, like we've said before, I sincerely hope that this situation is able to be resolved. Whatever the resolution of that is, you know, it's kind of up to the locker room. It's up to the people he defended. It's up to guys like Big E who tweeted out against it the other day. It's up to guys like our troop who was one of the people that uh, that Lars actually mentioned by yeah. name in those gross message board posts. So while, yeah, I mean, the Titus news is pretty encouraging, he probably has a lot of ground still to cover mm -hmm. and his path to atonement has only really just started. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction, as you say 100%. there. And as with everything in my life, if it's all right with Titus, it's all right with me. <laughs> wow. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE if you want to send them to us. Uh, Ryan Mawinney starts us off who uh, he asked an interesting question here. Why doesn't Dash and Dawson just sit out the remainder of their contract like Harper and Neville instead of being treated like jokes in embarrassing segments on Raw? I think the easy answer to that is because they're professionals and they don't want to be seen as anything other. Um, I don't know like the legality of all this. I don't know if you can just kind of like do a Neville and how that affects your position in the company. Neville wasn't caved. It came out the other month uh, for the, all that time he sat on the shelf. He was completely unpaid by the company. They froze him off. Maybe Dash and Dawson just can't afford to do that. There's all kinds of things that really, without knowing the inner workings and the legalities of that contract, that I can't really confidently answer mm. it. But the short answer is I would assume that they just kind of want to be seen as they are doing the right thing. They are cooperating with what their bosses say, no matter how embarrassing that may be. And when you do that, the only way from a professional standpoint that you can come out is smelling like roses. Exactly. And I completely agree with that. And clutching at the last, the last straw that I can, there still might be the smallest chance that this is salvageable their relationship with WWE, not that awful bloody boozy hot cream storyline. Is that a work? No, it's not a work. It's definitely not a work <laughs> for once. Uh, for next once. question comes from Storms Cryer on Twitter, who says, uh, would you have preferred, guys have preferred, what name, sorry, would you guys have prefer preferred for the Kabuki Warriors? And bonus question, how long will it take for Michael Cole to screw up and accidentally call them the Bukaki Warriors? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, this is the news. <laughs> it's a God. good question, Storm I think you better take that one, brother. <laughs> um, look, they, they said themselves they wanted, to be the, was they, they wanted to be the Kabuki girls. Kabuki girls, yeah. Uh, look, I've, I've given up complaining about WWE names. Eventually, you just sort of have to let it wash over you. I get it that the Viking experience was a step too far, but it's got the name of their finisher over, I suppose, and their new name is just fine. The Kabuki Warriors is crap, isn't it? The Kabuki Girls Slim. would have been fine. I'm more pissed off at their awful theme, which is just five oh, seconds of yeah. uh, Kairi Sane's theme, uh. five seconds of Asuka's theme, back to five seconds, just terrible. Uh, and I'm gonna say, I reckon when they win the women's tag team titles, that's the first thing Michael Cole's gonna shout. Bukaki! <laughs> Bukaki! <laughs> It's gonna happen. It's cool. going to happen. I'll move on. You don't have to answer that yeah, one. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section <laughs> below on that one. Final question today comes from Sean Acklin, who says, no confidence. Remember when all, the, all but three guys said that about Triple H in Storyline? Like, remember that a few years ago? You had CM Punk ringing the bell and doing commentary and, you know, wearing his jumper or whatever it was. Anyway. Uh, Sean Acklin says, to cool down the current firestorm he's facing after that Wade Keller show that we reported on yeah. yesterday and all the stuff that came out allegedly from a friend of the writers, what must Vince McMahon do to re-establish re confidence in the fans and all who work for him? I don't think he can. I think he's that... Done. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Vince is at the stage where he can properly be reformed. Um, at the same time, though, I don't necessarily think that Vince cares about stuff like this. Like, until it starts affecting his balance sheet, and it kind of did in the last the last quarterly reports, unfortunately. Um, until it really has that kind of adverse effect, I don't think he gives a damn. Like, look at the Lars Sullivan situation. Until a sponsor got involved, he was like, ah, I don't care about that, pal. Just, just going to ignore that. it'll go away. Yeah, just going to ignore that one, pal. Um, yeah, no, like, I, I, I think it's impossible. I don't think... The, the level of trust that has been lost in Vince McMahon is so great, I don't think it can ever be recovered, to be honest. I think I, I'm inclined to agree. I think 
just make a good, consistent product for a while. That Stop would be nice. Stop changing things all the time. Look, the wild car rule is the perfect example of that. Where are those two pubes anyway? Oh, don't worry, yeah. I, uh, I dealt with them the other day. Oh, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, I think just just make good wrestling. Yeah. It's really simple. Do a good let the wrestlers wrestle. Just let the wrestlers yeah. wrestle. You know, maybe steal stuff from that you're seeing AW Cesaro. planning on doing. Push Cesaro, you know, <laughs> let people do more unscripted promos and just stop micromanaging bloody everything because you've got all the pieces there. You're just pushing square pegs in round holes as it stands. Absolutely. Right, let's move on to today's and finally, and as promised, I will reveal the biggest signing, I'd say, in AEW's short history. Who would you say, prior to this, is AEW's biggest signing? Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega? Yeah, I mean, Chris Jericho, probably one of the greatest of all time. Not even close to this, because I can exclusively reveal now, thanks to a recent Reddit post on Reddit Gangrel. Squared Circle. <laughs> Not Gangrel. Oh. I can exclusively reveal, thanks to a post on Reddit Squared Circle, that AEW have signed Harry Bloody Potter. <laughs> there, he there he is with all the gang. Look how happy Tony Khan looks, by the way, signing oh, Harry Potter. My goodness. He's, he's literally signed Harry Potter. Look at Potter. them all cramming into that photo. Well. Hey, hey, can I get a photo with you, Harry? <laughs> They're going to have a Quidditch death match. So there you go. Exciting up. times to be, uh, to be an AEW fan. Don't show that to Vince, because then he will try and sign bloody, I don't know, some other magician. Who's another Gandalf, famous? yeah. David Blaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David Blaine? He's going to make the money in the back Paul briefcase Daniels. and disappear. <laughs> Paul Dan De Being accompanied to the ring by Debbie McGee. <laughs> oh, don't wait. There's no your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories <laughs> in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, <laughs> share, and subscribe. And send us your Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE. Whilst well, you're there, you can follow both of us. You can follow him at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Harry. You're a wizard. Follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can follow us all at one called GWWE. My thanks to Andy. Thanks to Magic. Thanks to you for watching. And we will see you soon. Professionals. <laughs> Harry, you're a wizard. <laughs>